So hi guys, hope you're doing well. So today is on Friday, 28th of August, the last week of August. So we are transitioning to a new month. Uh, we're just about to start looking at some of the markets. So this is a Friday, basically reviewing and trying to look for some day trade setups. But I don't think there will be much that will be happening, at least from my end, from my setups. So we'll share with you some nuggets and other things as we shall be starting. So we are starting in a few, in a few, in a few minutes. Anyway, I'll jump straight in, so I won't waste any more time. The minute is over and time is again not on our side. So this week we've seen some huge moves in the market and you've also seen some good manipulation in the market. So if you were watching markets yesterday, we had some release of some news by the Federal Reserve and we had some whipsaws to the upside and to the downside so the markets first had some like one two hours where there was a lot of noise and finally markets have settled and as usual the trend has continued so markets are still moving in the trend that they were moving and i don't think there was anything that changed what changed was probably um, if your stops are not well placed if you never managed the trade in a good manner then the volatility was too high for you it was hot and Probably you were kicked out of some of your trades or you were stopped out. But if you were not stopped out and you managed to find the trend, I'm sure you're still in profit. So for me, I'll just go through some of the pairs that I have and look at what happened yesterday and what that means for the coming future. Because I think there was also some, some news that was quite influential on some of the pairs that we're trading, especially the dollar. And the dollar obviously affects many other assets in the market. So I'll just start, jump directly into showing you what I have on my watch list for, for this week at least before we start next week. So let me just, let me just open a new tab. Okay, so on my watch list I normally have around five things every single week. And for this week I had Euro Yen sterling oil gold and obviously dow jones so dow jones never touched it uh, i think only executed trades on oil gold and and gbp usd and also i think i i had some euro yen positions which i i liquidated yesterday so i started the week with gold and gold has it's sitting in a consolidation so first of all we are we are transitioning from one month to another and i think it pays to to look at what happened during August, first of all, to understand what is likely to happen in September. So if you're tracking these markets, you'll discover that August started with a move downward. And what happened after that was a strong consolidation. So if you look at gold, after this drop from 6th or 5th of, some of August, we then had a consolidation and we have been sitting here for quite some time. So that means in September we are likely to see a trending market or a further consolidation going on in this market, probably for another month before we break out and make new highs again, because obviously the trend is to the upside, or we could get a correction to the downside this coming month, and then we'll get a breakout to the upside after the correction has happened. But I think if you look at gold, you'll discover that we have been consolidating. So on the four hour chart, uh, we are sitting in a sort of a triangle, if you, if you draw the patterns that we all draw normally. So if you just bring this line, you'll discover that we're sitting in this triangle, and we have stayed in this triangle for quite some time now. So you can see we had this first drop, second drop, third drop, and now we are seated here. So I'm looking for a breakout, but I don't think I'll be trading this breakout this week. So I think next week we can wait for the breakout, probably to the upside or to the downside. I won't give the direction on this one because I'm still seated on the fence. I've not yet decided which which side I'll bet my money on, but I think there's a good move, probably a 1,000 or 500 to 1,000 pips coming after this breakout because we have been consolidated here for quite some time now. So if you just look at the hourly again, the same same pattern is information and this is the week so that I'm talking about. So if you are in longs positions, you can see clearly we just had some 15, 20 minutes where we had some bullish momentum and then within 15 minutes it was all gone and we were back to where we were. And the markets actually moved lower. They were supported by this line. So I have this sort of a channel on the hourly chart which has been supported for quite some time and now it looks like if we if we get a breakout above 1950 1960 i think markets could visit 2000 again that will be my first target but if we 
manage if you don't manage to stay above those levels then i think it's right for you to be still short so for this one no clear setup for now i'm out of this one i'm not watching anything i'm just seated oh so euro yen this is the best i think this was one of the best setups for this week if you just look at it keenly it it was a very very good move so we had sort of a bounce of this trend line so if you just do your back work you'll discover that you had this trend line and then you got a third bounce you had a move to r1 a correction again to p and then we had this bullish move which took place yesterday after the after the, the news the news was out and then now we've gotten a correction again to this line and i think we'll still get a continuation to to 127.2 so if i was to take a day trade today i think i'd want to gamble with this one so i don't want to place my money here and wait for this market to come at least to this level if if if, if that's a must but again i don't think it's wise because we have gotten this bullish move and i th don't think we'll get a continuation at least for today so probably we'll sit here and then next week once the market's open we can get a continuation to the upside because if you look at it from a daily perspective i think this market is still in an uptrend and i think the first level where i think we'll get a significant correction is at the 130.5 level so if you touch 130.5 that's when markets will start changing from being bullish to to at least a correction of about 500 600 points like this one but if you're trying to sell this market now i'm sure you've been losing money and if you're losing money you know you're on the wrong side of the market definitely so this market is likely to keep on moving high at least to 130.5 so it's your job now to look for how you'll be coming in and coming out as the markets will be moving so there are some rallies which will obviously get some corrections like we had this correction and now we've gotten this correction but i think for me i want to be in the direction of the trend that's where the big money is and i think that's where you'll make good cash if you're in the direction of the trend so just find a way to make sure you're seated in the direction of the trend at least till you get the 130.5 so for this one i don't think we'll get a, 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 a consolidation yet until you get to 130.5 that's when you can know how these markets will be moving but i think for now we'll just get slight moves higher and corrections as we as we, as we move higher so the last one that i look at for today is sterling so i also had a very very good position on this one and i came out yesterday with this madness but it never got to my target clearly you can see but i think this madness was so much for me so i couldn't keep on holding while i was not objective so when there's noise in the market i prefer to be out let the noise fade then i'll come in again the markets are an arena of endless opportunities you don't have to force to make money in this game you can just wait for the right opportunities to come in and you'll make money so for this one there was this noise but clearly you can see the trend direction continued and you can expect this market to tap into 1.3350 before the end of today if you look at the daily chart i think this one is one of the best bets for next month because this month we haven't done any trending or any movement so we've been seated in this consolidation and i think now we are breaking out so come next month i think i'll be looking for longs at least 1.35 1.37 on sterling which is a very good pair if you are on the right side of the trend so on the four hour 1.3350 fast short term target if 3250 holds like it's rejecting clearly then you could probably get a correction and then next week we could get that rally that i'm talking about because the dollar has not broken out so the last thing that i look at is the dollar index which caleb has normally looked at but i don't think i've shared with you my perspective on this one for a long time so i just want to throw in some of the things that i'm looking at in this one so if you look at the dollar from a four year five year ten year perspective it's it pays again to always have the big picture perspective of what's happening so if you look at these patterns that are forming here at least from 2015 2016 when trump was elected we had a collapse in the dollar we had a pullback and now i think we are in the next phase of a collapse i'm looking for the dollar to move all the way to 84.5 so i think this is a big 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 move to the downside i think this is the fourth month of bearish momentum and i think we could get a repeat of this a repeat of what happened about four years ago in 2016 could happen again with this election cycle and you could get this dollar moving lower all the way to 84 85 at least before we get this move higher so in the weekly chart what am i watching we are currently seated at 92.5 we have been struggling for the last four months four weeks i mean to take out this level and i think once this breakout has happened we will get a very very good trending market the downside taking us lower first to 90 then 87.5 if you just look at the daily which i think has clearer picture of what is happening <clears throat> so i was mapping out this one yesterday when i was just 
looking at markets to try and understand what is happening so we had the first drop a consolidation second drop a consolidation third drop a consolidation and i think you know what will happen next we'll get a fourth drop if we won't get a pullback so i think i would want to be in the direction of the trend again like i always said and i think the best move now for me is to the downside so currently i'm not in any positions i'm just watching let's see if today we'll manage to get a close below 92.5 if it doesn't happen today, then we can try next week. But once this happens, you can be sure there's a good move here. And it is during such moves that personally I like making big money because I, I, like I like trending markets, markets which are moving to my side. And then I can come in and capitalize on such small moves because that is where I am a bit aggressive. So on the four-hour chart, we have this channel, which is more of a, a bigger picture perspective of what is happening on the daily. And you can see clearly... There was this manipulation yesterday, but clearly we're in this consolidation. So we have not yet taken out the 92.5. Let's be patient. Let's wait for the markets to break out, and then we'll know how to position ourselves. So that's it from me. I think Caleb will take over from there, and he will share with you some more nuggets on markets. Hey, everyone. I hope everyone is well. So as Kenna said, I'll just look at a few pairs. We'll jump into that dollar weakness that we're seeing on the market, show you my analysis, and then we can move on. So if you go straight into the charts, I won't waste time since Ken has talked about everything. So straight into the charts. If you know me, you know I like looking a lot at market structure. And that is what we're seeing here. As Ken has covered, we've seen this impulse, correction, impulse, correction. We've got this impulse, then sort of this correction. So what we're looking at, I remember we covered this channel on Monday. I, no, on Wednesday, I mean. We we're looking at this channel that was forming. So as usual, we're talking about this either being a uh, uh, continuation flag, which if market just con it, it comes, sort of gets this correction. Many people think it's going to correct. Then it continues in the trend direction. Or else something else that can happen, we can get this third bounce down here. Then we get that correction. But if we see that momentum coming into the market, will continue with the direction of the trend. So that's on the four-hour chart. Coming down, we're looking at this still dollar index. What Ken has covered, 92.5 is what is holding the markets. So until you get that break, as Ken has said, let's be patient. Let's look for that break to the downside. If you look at the one-hour chart now, you can clearly see that channel that is forming. Here you go. So you can clearly see this channel. Let me remove this. Okay, no point to remove it. But anyway, you can see this channel that is forming and market has that potential of continuing to the downside to target this. This is the same one that's on the daily chart just being, uh, we're looking at it much, much more clear on this. So if you look at that, what do you expect to happen on the other pairs? Dollar, uh, USD card, we're seeing that downward trend coming. For our chart, we've still been in that channel. We've not broken that channel. So as Ken was saying, if you're trending, if you're trading in the trend direction, then you're much better off on this one. Just like uh dollar index we had this impulse correction over here impulse correction over here and now we're getting sort of this impulse coming close to what has been happening mostly what has been happening this week we've been having this consolidation between here and then yesterday we had this strong close with those spikes that were happening below this support level within this ranging market clearly seen on the four hour chart so first before i go deep if you see this you can see this channel is still being in formation. So this on the four hour chart. And then we came, we sort of got this consolidation, which market just came and got that trend line bounce on this side. That was the <coughs> sort of the third bounce. So we had one, two, three, four, five. So we got that fifth bounce. And now we are seeing market going into new lower lows. You can see this was a good, good break below this level. However, there was a lot of, a lot of noise. If you go on the one hour chart, you can see I'm clearly mapping it out. As I said, a lot of market structure is what we look at. And you can see this is what we got yesterday. So yesterday I had a, a long position and short position within this level. I got 
uh, a bit uh, with this a lot of momentum coming to the market my long position was stopped out and I came out of my short position quite early on before this market went into my direction so those are trading mistakes we're looking at and trying to correct but if you look at market structure you can see this was a good channel also to follow you can see it's just like we're going downstairs so we had this one correction one correction against sideways it doesn't have to be a pullback sideways movement touch of the trend line and then went further down so right now also I don't have any trade running on this one I'm just watching the market but I'm also inclined to the trend direction it's better not to trade against it so for our chart we're seeing it clearly clearly you can see this previous four hour chart which closed at eight was very very bearish so we can see the end if you look at the weekly chart we're seeing the week ending very very bearish as you can see we sort of if you sorry about that so you can see we sort of had this trend line so beautiful beautiful trend line market had that breakout last week today we this week we sort of retested this trend line over here that's why we are seeing that week that is over there this week over here and now market has gone further down so expect a lot of bearish tone on this one we're also paying attention to the monthly closes very very bearish ever since we got this top so we had this double top and market is in that downward momentum so i'm very bearish on this especially after we close this month like this we continue being bearish if you go down to ken has covered uh, gbp usd but just to do a recap of what we did uh remember remember when this breakout channel we looked at this also on wednesday so you can see we sort of have this channel market came broke out and now we are looking at this correction over here so also like ken we're also seeing this market i said you can sort of have that breakout consolidation and market to continue on the upside so we can see a lot of momentum coming on this especially with that weekly close that we are getting this week you can see very very bullish very bullish and if you look at this pattern that we covered i remember there's a time back i said 1.35 level was a good target 1.35 and if you break that we are looking for 1.3637 to the upside so this was an expanding flat triangle that we always look at we had sort of this on uh aussie dollar and also now this is what we got on this one so this is on the weekly chart very very bullish you can see this previous weeks Previous weeks in August we've sort of been in consolidation and look at how this week is ending. Very, very bullish. So we can get that bullish tone to the upside, but watch for 1.335 as first target if broken, because you can see it was very, very strong resistance. Once it's broken, we can get those push to the upside. Maybe that breakout retest and then we continue to the upside. So we're still observing that pattern that is forming very, very beautifully. This chart pattern, so we can see now i also don't have any trade running on this one we had a lot of whip sewing yesterday and now we're just watching to see how market will continue today also today we still have the feds talking the the symposium is still going on so also pay attention to that and they're talking a lot about inflation and that's why we saw those mad spikes on gold so looking at aussie dollar same thing just like the uh gbp usd we're within a channel and market entered another channel pattern so you can see beautiful beautiful pattern i had this 78.6 these were good buying levels on this pair as you can see 78.6 within this channel pushed to the upside we came back down had a 78.6 retracement on this one market pushed all the way up so also bullish bullish tone on this one i'm paying attention to how the weekly close will close which is very very bullish just like gbp usd as you can see over here a lot a lot of we had a lot of consolidation end of this month got that push to the upside so a pattern that we're making sure this time we're watching candlestick patterns monthly chart also very very strong we've had five months of bullish action so if you are bullish ever since the start of april this market has been going into your favors into the upside so that's what we're looking at last i look at is what ken has covered on gold i can show you my perspective on it so gold daily chart still have that channel formation so usually what happens after we have very very strong impulses is market enters into a consolidation and that's what we're getting over here market came very strongly to the upside got that 50 percent correction to the downside and then we enter this correction over here so a move is coming and how do you know a move is coming very soon is because on the four hour chart and the hourly chart we're looking at this triangular formation so triangular formation you can see we're sort of consolidating like this let me open it on the one hour it's much more clear so 
pattern, pattern, pattern is what we're looking at. So you can see this is a classical triangular formation. This was a wedge market form, then came with a lot of momentum. Yesterday we had this sort of uh, about 400 pips to the upside and market came back down another more than 700 pips. So be careful when you're trading with gold. Be very, very careful not to over position size because if the market goes against you, you're going to blow your account. So this is what we're looking at. We're waiting to see how market will respect this level. And this is 1950 level. We get that break to the upside, then we'll be looking for this market going uh, further back up. First target targeting $2,000 mark and then to the upside. But if market continues consolidating here, if we break to the downside, we'll just wait for that sure break. Right now, I can't bet on any side. You can see over here, market has just been in a lot of sideways movement. So do not get trapped in the ranging market. Wait for those impulses to come and we'll bet in the direction of that so that's basically all i have i've covered usb card gbp usd oc dollar and gold the pairs that i'm currently watching at the moment so that's it for me i don't have much apart from that that's what we're looking at and yeah so make sure if you're trading uh, if you're analyzing over the weekend look at your analysis for the monthly closes pay attention to that because 31st that first is on monday i guess so on monday we'll have that monday close and then you'll see uh, the market now respecting the uh, monthly close of the previous month, and then we move on to the next month. So that's what we'll, that's what we have. Uh, if I can answer a few questions that I'm seeing here on the chat room, uh, what's your long long term goal in forex? Do you think it's possible to start a hedge fund in Kenya? Uh, yes, very very soon. Many people we know we are, we know a couple of people who are already in the works of doing that. If you know SIB Standard Investment Bank, they're the first regulated uh, forex traders who can trade people's money. So that's Standard Investment Bank. You can just do your research, check it online. But yes, the hedge fund industry is really going to grow with time. Investment bank where people will be investing so that you can trade, so that your money can be traded for you. So that's something I see. That's why we are trading in this industry if you weren't looking at that vision then personally we, w we wouldn't be uh pushing much in this industry but there's that growth a lot of a lot of growth in the market very soon what loss size do you guys use it depends with your account so personally as you know we are trading that ten thousand nine thousand dollar account when we're doing that the lot size i cannot say which lot size we use because they vary depending on the risk reward you're taking so but i think the minimum we do is 0 0.05 so we take 0 0.05 going up 0 0.1 depending on this uh, risk reward you're taking. So everything depends on the risk reward. That is what will determine your lot size in any trade. I uh, hope I've answered your question. Lot size depends on account size. Yeah, even Alex has talked about it. So yeah, it depends on your account size and depends on the risk reward you're taking. Your risk, the amount you're risking is what will determine how much of the lot size. Maybe even I'm risking I can be risking let's say 1% and the risk on that can allow me to take a one lot size. So it depends, it all depends. Maybe a risk cause for example let's say on Aussie dollar which doesn't have a lot of peak movement I can risk higher. So depending on that let's say I'm risking 1% I can decide to take a one lot. So that's one lot. But if you do the same on gold, gold you have to now minimize that. I can be risking 1% but it will require me to take maybe 0.05 a lot size so that depends on the account size you have and the risk reward you're using how do you cope with whipsaws like yesterday's uh you accept the market for what it is and you move on <laughs> there's nothing much i can say with that that happens in the market you should always be prepared that anything can happen so such whipsaws you can never predict that this market is going to be so here then go back down up down you never sometimes you'll be caught on the wrong side sometimes you can be lucky and be caught on the right side but Anything happens in the market, so always, always be prepared for that. So you cope with it, you accept it, you accept the loss and move on. So overall, what's your success rate so far? Uh, we'll be sharing that very, very soon. On We are working on a certain uh, program here at Financial Hub where we'll be releasing sort of like how we trade here at Financial Hub or sort of a series or so where you'll be seeing all that in the background. So before this meeting expires, I don't want to talk so much. Let me i don't see any other question i think all the others have been answered and i think ken is done yeah. so so that's it so i hope you have a wonderful week guys we'll catch you guys on monday